This is going to be easy finding out about the kereru. Well, it would be if we could find one. Looks like you're having some trouble over there. What's the story? Well, we're trying to do some research on the native bird of New Zealand, called the kereru. All we know is that it's a threatened species, which means it's in danger of disappearing from our local area. And we want to do something to help it. Sounds like something I could help you with. I'm the ecology detective. Working to keep things that should work together, working together like they should. Huh? You see, every part of our environment relies on other parts more than you may realise. If something not quite right happens in one place, the effects can flow on to cause more problems elsewhere. Don't worry, knowledge leads to action, and that's where my checklist comes in handy. Once we know all of these things, then we are a step closer to being able to do something to help. Okay then, let's start at the top of the list. Where does the kereru live? For that, we can go that away. Kereru are native birds, so they must like native trees, I guess. Absolutely. They like to nest in large trees, such as tawa and tarere. What about what they eat? Kereru are big birds and they like to eat lots of big berries. They eat from a variety of trees. They love fruit from sun trees that have been introduced to New Zealand, such as guava, plum, cherry and lokwood. And many of their all-time favourite berries come from native trees, such as kōwhai, pūriri, nikau and cabbage tree. One of the things that makes the kereru special is that it's the only bird to be able to eat the big berries of the tarere and karaka. The seeds need <coughs> bird poop to help them grow. Whoa, so if we lose the kereru, we could lose those trees too. And if we lose them, then that could lead to other problems. Absolutely. We're only halfway through our checklist and I can already think of some things that we could do to help the kereru. Yeah, if we plant more of the trees that they like to nest in and a variety of trees that will give them food all year round. Wow, you guys are quick learners. Well done, but even if we reverse the problem by planting more trees, we'd still have the problem of a variety of other threats. There are pests such as rats, stoats and ferrets that climb trees to eat the eggs and attack the kereru. Well, maybe they're safer by my house if I have enough of the right trees in my yard because I don't think there's any stoats or ferrets living there. Yes, but our own pets love a little taste of kereru kai or pigeon pie. If they're left to roam free and able to make a surprise attack, they'll kill kereru. And one other thing, we all know what a window is, but unfortunately kereru don't. One of the largest killers for kereru in the urban areas is flying full speed towards a glass window which they don't know is there. And the good thing is, now we've completed our knowledge checklist and can get started on working on solutions to help eliminate threats. We can plant a variety of trees that the kids are living and feed from to help them grow. We can set some people safe but pest stopping traps and tree rings are great at stopping pests from climbing up trees and stealing eggs. We can have our dogs on their leash to control their movement. Bells on cats' neck bands will alert any bird of an approaching feline. Also, installing a cat door in your house will give your cat a chance to not have to stay outside all day. Finally, it's as simple as putting a sticker on your window to let the kereru know that they can't get through. Wow! I think we've done it! Look! A real life kereru!